Hi everyone, Barb here from Charmed and Chalked in downtown Stony Creek. And uh, today I'm going to show you uh, a dry brushing technique. So this has become quite a popular technique. It kind of gives things a weathered look, but yet you can make it refined as well. So I've done a lot of bedroom sets like this. I've done stuff for people's cottages like this where you can do it a little more rustic. So basically rule of thumb and it, you don't need to follow the rules at all. But this dresser, you want to pick a color and you want to give it, you know, two good coat. Like you want to paint the dresser or whatever it is, whatever piece you're actually working on. So this one here has been done. Uh, we got two coats of little lamb on it and with uh, now what we're going to do is usually you pick three other colors so all together in your project you're going to want four colors minimum and in this case we've got little lamb it's on the dresser and i've pulled out soapstone i've pulled out raw silk and i've pulled out liberty blue and so what we're going to do and you want to make sure you have a brush. You want to make sure you have a brush for every color that you're using. Because if you start mixing colors on your brush, you're going to get a hot mess. And then you're going to get totally different colors going through. It's okay to do blending on here, but you don't want to blend your brushes together. So I'm going to try to stand behind here so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. So basically, you've got your piece of furniture. You've got your full coverage, you've painted it, it's been smooth sanded. So basically right now you could top coat this and or just leave it and you're ready to go. But we're gonna take it one step further. So what I like to do is I'm going to actually start with a shade, it's our soapstone, which is a couple of shades up from the one that we're doing. You don't wanna go too drastic, you wanna build that drama because if you try to do too much in just one shot, then what's gonna happen is it's just going to be too much of a contrast. So, but here's the trick. So I'm gonna start with soapstone, and I'm gonna put a little bit of soapstone on my brush, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch, up to half an inch, but I'm gonna take off as much as I can. I do not want much paint left on this brush at all. Then I'm gonna take cardboard, this is what I do with my cardboard boxes, people, and I'm going to unload it. That's what it's called, unloading. So I'm basically unloading the color. So now you get to a point where you're thinking, I got no color left on this thing. Well, you do actually have color. And I don't know if Brian can capture this or not, but I'm going to come back and I'm not gonna be pressing. You don't wanna put any pressure on your brush. You just kinda of wanna come across and then you come back again. And when you're doing big areas like this, you, you want to try to go from one side to the other. It's okay if it's not perfect. With this technique, you don't want it to be perfect. It's hard to tell how much paint I have in this can. So again, unload, and then you're going to come across. If you notice with my brush, I'm not pressing down. I am not adding a whole bunch of pressure to it. But you can see where you're starting to get some, almost like a texture look to it, but you're not, it's not a full out painting stroke. And overlap, overlap a bit. So you wanna kinda of come back and forth. So you'll see, and if you get a little too much in one area, don't worry about it, because you can always come back with a little lamb, the one that you started with, and make sure that you get the look you want. So all this kind of stuff is, is working with it until you get it the way you want it to look. And this particular technique, you do not have to be perfect at all. I, as a matter of fact, you don't want to be perfect, because it's kind of supposed to look like it's kind of sat out on a porch and it's weathered, and it's, it's, it's seen a lot of love. So now I've got a little more back here than, so where I've unloaded, I'm just gonna pop a little more back on my brush and come back over where I started, just to kind of even those colors out. Now the beauty of dry brushing is it dries really, really fast. So 
and I, I'm not going to leave the edges because it might just cause me to have a pain. With the edges, you're going to just do the same thing, but nice and lightly. So let me do this to see if you can see what I'm doing. So you see, it's okay. You don't want it to be perfect. It is not a full out look. It's not a solid look you're going for because you still want that under color to come through. So that is the first time. We're just going to show you the top. So that's the first color. So now I'm going to put that brush down and I'm going to come back with a little bit of an accent color. I've chosen Liberty Blue because I think blues and grays look amazing together. Um, so it's just me. And again, you want to take as much off your brush. So this is Liberty Blue. Now, you can come back over what you've done now exactly the same way and get those layers in or you can just go in certain areas that you want. So I'm going to kind of come across here. And when you're not going straight across your piece, see how I'm kind of feathering it out so that you don't have a start and stop area on your, uh, on your piece. So make sure you unload because you'll get that if you don't unload. And then I'm going to come over here. So you're not kind of putting it everywhere in this one. If you wanted to, you absolutely could. You absolutely can. There's really, like I said, there's really no major rules in doing this technique. I want some along the edges because I just love the blue. And I want to try to blend everything in. So, see like there I didn't blend very well, so I'm just going to come back over it again. And it'll be fine because we actually are going to add another color. And now, I'm just going to put a little bit more on my brush. So you can see how little a paint. We sell those little pots of paint, so it's just little tiny ones. And if you're doing any sort of dry brushing technique, even on a dresser this size, one of those for your accent colors, you'd probably need a pint for your full paint and then a couple of those for your accent colors and then you'd be fine. So, again, I'm going to let you see what I'm doing here. So here, I'm just coming. I'm going to put a little extra there. See how the edge is kind of popping out with the blue? Because I'm really going for that blue feel here. So that's that color. So now, see how fast it dries too when you're doing the... Now I'm going to come back because what's going to make this stuff pop is a contrasting color. So these blues, grays are all in the same family. So now I'm going to come over with raw silk. And I'm unloading. See how much I'm unloading. And I'm going to come across this. Again, you can do as much or as little as you want. You can just do it in spots. I like to do the first level, the first layer. I go straight over everything. Second, I kind of do different tones, a little more here, a little less here. And then with the kind of like the white or a raw silk, something really light, something that's going to make everything pop, I'll go right across. And it's okay if it's more in some places than it is in others. Because like I said, you don't want this to be perfect. And you can just kind of play. Just keep your hand light. Don't apply pressure. If you apply pressure, you are going to regret it. Well, not regret it. I mean, this is almost foolproof. If you screw up, just go back to your, your little lamb and put it through and it'll be fine. You can make this look, you can do this in a, a number of colors too. You can do this in your grays, you can do blues, you can do yellows, you can do whatever colors you like. Just make sure you don't press hard. Keep the feathering down. And I just want to come back and I just want to add a little to some certain areas that seem to be popping. So, let me just get a little more paint on my brush. Because now I'm going to do just a little bit across. It takes such a little amount of paint. I'm telling you, it is a really, really, really 
great technique for getting a whole lot of personality. You don't have to be perfect. In fact, it looks better when it's not perfect. And I'm going to come across here and there. So that is what I call, I'm not even sure if it has a name to be honest. It's dry brushing, yes, but I call it my driftwood look. So you, and if you feel at this point, hmm, I think I want another color or I want to maybe put a little bit of yellow in there or something, you're, the sky's the limit. You can put as many colors as you want in there. But I just wanted to show you the technique. So at this point with this, once it's dry completely, and I would leave it a little bit, I would actually give it a sand so that everything's nice and smooth. And it kind of looks a little more blended in when you sand it as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. And then I'm gonna continue on. And probably, not sure what I'm gonna do with the drawers yet on this piece, but the tops and the sides and everything is gonna be done in the same way. And then we're gonna take it from there. But I just wanted to give you uh, another option on dry brushing and how you can actually do a complete piece and give it that old world rustic look with pretty much ease. So anyway, that's it for now. And we, if you were gonna leave it like this, just refer back to our top coat, uh, tough coat application process and you do that and you're good to go. We'll see you next time.